Day two of the 2024 FIDE candidates saw all decisive games in one of the absolute sharpest rounds in candidates history. Folks, we've got a ton of action to get through, so let's just immediately jump into the day's results. Hikaru Nakamura got in trouble early on as he fell into Vidit's opening preparation and ended up losing with White in the first game to finish. Meanwhile, the other American, Fabiano Caruana, put the pressure on and managed to trick Abasov to pick up his first win of the event. Also showing fantastic preparation was Jan Nepomneshi, who used his time and position to defeat Ali Reza Feruja. And while Gukesh won the Battle of the Indian Juniors, surviving some very, very sharp preparation by his opponent, Pragnananda, in order to join the leader group as well. In the women's candidates, Tan Zhongyi won her second game in a row, defeating Vaishali in nice style, while top seed Alexandra Goryachkina managed to defeat Anna Muzichuk to take clear second place going into round three with one and a half out of two. Starting with the game here between Hikaru Nakamura and Vidit Gushrathi, this one started off as a Berlin D3 bishop C5 and C3. But here after d6 and knight e7, Hikaru started spending some time. He put, plays the move d4, Vidit responds c6, and now probably he could take on c5. This would be kind of a pawn sacrifice for black after c takes b5, c takes d6, knight to g6. Black would try and pick up this pawn back in due time. But instead, Hikaru decided to drop back bishop to d3, bishop to b6, and now Hikaru takes twice on e5. And here, Vida responded with the immediate bishop takes h3, a fantastic shot. Now, the tactical justification here is that if g takes h3, black's plan is this tricky move queen to b8. Now, why does the queen need to go to b8? The idea is that it's hitting the knight on e5 and eyeing the g3 square to give a very nasty check. So if knight f3, queen to g3, this would be very, very bad for white. Queen takes h3 is coming, rook a d8 as well, and white is going to be losing the material. Now, Hikaru could go bishop to f4 here, and this is why the queen absolutely has to go to b8 in this position so that black can follow with the move bishop to c7 and win back the piece. Nevertheless, this was still playable for white after something like bishop h2, for example. Bishop takes e5 and f4. I believe the position is still extremely complicated and very double-edged. White has the two bishops, but the king is a little bit weak, and uh, most likely that this was part of Vidit's preparation. Instead, Naka spent some time, decided not to take on h3, but rather play this move knight c4, possibly trying to play it safe and avoid complications. However, this was very difficult to do. After bishop g4, black was able to hang on to the initiative here for quite some time. Queen c2 was played, bishop c7. Here Naka plays e5 and takes the h7 pawn. But after king h8, the problem is white now needs to bring the bishop back. Vidit plays b5, takes this pawn on e5, and black just has way too much activity here. Now at this point, white needed to go knight takes g4, where black can take on d3 or take back on g4. In both cases, black is doing well here. But after bishop to e2, another mistake, Vidit found a very nice move, f5, and now white is just in huge, huge trouble. Black's pieces are super active, f4 is coming soon, f3 as well. This is just really, really bad for white. Naka tried the move f4, but now after bishop to b6, Vidit's attack here was just way too strong. If takes on e5, then knight to d5, and black is winning back the piece on e3. Instead, king f2 was tried by Naka, but knight d5 anyway. White takes on e5, and now queen to g5. Black is winning the piece back on e3, and white's king is just in way too much uh, danger here. Naka tried to hang on, but with the king in the center, it was just a matter of time before this was all over. Vidit brought the pieces back, and after knight f1 check, it was resigned as knight to g3 is coming, and black is just winning way too much material. Moving on to the game between Caruana and Abasov, this was a Rosalimo where black played this pretty trendy line with bishop to d6, and it didn't seem like white got much of an advantage here. Maybe a small edge where he can try and press, uh, put some pressure on uh, black's position after queen e3, knight h5, the pair traded bishops, and we ended up in this very typical Rosalimo uh, middle game. 
Fabi plays for this plan to advance f4 and basically put a little bit of pressure on his opponent throughout the game. Now piling up on the f file, king to g7 and b4. And for the most part, I think Abbasov defended quite well, but after he managed to break out a bit here, a5, c5, rook a1, I'll show you guys his biggest mistake of the game came later on, uh, basically when he was still very much holding g5 here, queen g3, h6, rook f2. It was at this moment things started to go very, very wrong for black. If he plays a move like rook to b8, he's absolutely still in the game. White is a pawn up here after a move like queen e3 or queen c3, but it of course wouldn't be simple to convert. Instead, Abbasov took on c4, allowing white to take on f5, and he takes on b3. Where after queen takes b3, he does win the pawn back with rook takes a5, but he likely just completely underestimated Fabi's response here, rook a f1. And all of a sudden, it's all over. White is turning rook f7, which wins the queen. If black tries rook a7, then white simply continues e6. There are other moves as well. The rook is coming to f7, and black's king here is just getting mated way too weak in the heavy piece middle game. Instead, king h8 was the continuation, and after rook to f7, Abbasov resigned as he's simply getting mated soon. White has so many threats of queen c2. If queen takes e5, then rook f8 check, followed by takes, and queen g8 would just be mate on the board. Moving on to the game between Nepo and Ferruja. This one also started off as a Berlin and in this one Nepo showed some very very creative preparation. As the game gets into this Italian uh, game type of structure, uh, Ferruja played knight to d5 here and after bishop to g4, Nepo uncorked this move queen a2, simply inviting black after knight b6 to take on f3, wreck white structure on the queen side, and grab this pawn with queen takes d3. Now at this point, Ferruja was also playing quite quickly here, indicating that he had seen this position before, but it seemed like Nepo knew this one further. Now he goes king to g2, threatening rook to d1, black is forced to drop back, Rook d1, queen to e8, and h4. Nepo still playing very, very quickly at this point, sacrificing a pawn, but for fantastic positional compensation, especially on the light squares. Knight on e4 is strong, and white has tremendous play on the king side with this plan of h5 and h6. Now, Ferruja defended here quite well for some time. Knight c8, h5, king h8. Around this moment, Nepo was already starting to spend a bunch of time uh, uh, himself indicating that he was out of his prep but the position was just incredibly sharp h6 here Ferruja responded with g5 a very very sharp move if white were to take this one then there would be issues on the g file instead queen to d2 was played a very interesting move looking to infiltrate with queen to d7 as well as putting the bishop on the long diagonal knight d6 bishop to b2 was the follow-up and around here Ferruja starts going slightly wrong the move knight to f5. The computer points out lots of different moves here for black. Rook to d8, f6. But long story short, this position was incredibly complicated for any two humans to play accurately. Knight f5, queen d7, knight h4 check was the continuation. King f1, f5. Ferruja getting the counterplay here on the king side, and he even manages to snag a second pawn with knight takes f3. But now after b5, white just starts getting a total grip on the light squares. f4 was played, knight to e4, knight a5, bishop to e6, and this was the critical moment where Ferruja ends up going very, very wrong. At this point, he was already in pretty massive time trouble. I'll remind you guys, in the open section, they have no increment until move 40. This was move 29, so with eight minutes to go, Frugia, not a lot of time. The best move, according to the computer, was g4, which makes sense to support the knight on f3. If bishop takes g4, there's knight h2 check in the position. And this one would have just been very, very complex after a queen takes c7, g3, for example, would just be an absolute mess on the board. Instead, Ferruja played the move queen to g6, sacrificing the bishop on e7. Black can't take on e4 because of queen to g7 mate. Queen takes h6 was played, but he simply didn't get enough for the piece. Nepo was able to convert his material advantage uh, with extreme precision here after bishop f7. Black gave a check plays queen to f5. If king takes f3, then g4 check. That would be very, very messy. Instead, 
bishop to d5 was played and as we can see white just got a total grip on the light squares rook a8 queen takes c7 at this point Ferruja was just trying not to flag and reach the first time control but after queen g4 king to d3 it was basically all over as white's king is able to escape the danger zone bishop on d5 nine on e4 these pieces are just absolutely dominant nine on a5 is out of the game and Ferruja kept fighting back he did manage to make the first time control but he had to give up another exchange just to keep the game going here he's down a full rook and of course the position can easily be messed up here uh, by white but nepo managed to uh, convert this one quite smoothly knight g3 nice move if takes then bishop takes e5 check and now black's king is going to get in huge trouble so instead what we saw uh, was knight to c4 fruja gives a piece in order to take on g3 but once again white is just up a full rook here and eventually nepo was able to convert this one quite handily finally going to the game between the two indian juniors pragnanda and gukesh this one started off with a catalan with prague showing fantastic prep sacrificing the c4 pawn and really just blitzing out all of his moves uh, gukesh of course played this opening quite fine despite spending a bit of time holding on to the extra pawn here after knight a5 prague continued to play extremely sharp with d5 sacrificing a second pawn so after takes his idea was to push e5 and after knight e8 he pushed e6 offering up the third pawn in order to leave black with huge weaknesses on the e-file gukesh didn't take the third pawn he played f5 which i felt was a reasonable move but now Prague definitely got some real compensation on the board knight to e5 and queen to c2 was played i think the engine was showing the move rook f to e1 uh, this game was very very messy there was lots of mistakes from both sides after c6 queen takes f5 Prague was able to win back one of his pawns and he la launches the knight on f7 but the problem is this knight ends up just being a huge target especially after gukesh's next move bishop to c8 and basically from here until the end of the game Prague was essentially on the back foot gukesh starts bringing all of his pieces back rook a7 and Prague did get one chance here that he finds with the peace sacrifice bishop takes d5 the point is that after cd knight takes d5 finally white's position comes alive here he has a number of threats knight takes f6 and so on after bishop b7 Prague basically missed one chance here to possibly hold the game that would have been knight h6 check the point is if king h8 white can retreat with knight f7 check and offer a repetition if black wants to play on he can take on h6 and then after queen g4 check bishop g5 f4 of course this looks incredibly complicated but this would have been the way to keep the game going for white instead we saw queen to g4 then after knight to d8 gukesh was able to consolidate here with his extra piece despite white's pawn on e6 being so impressive just wasn't able to push anywhere against black's two bishops and these two were in heavy time trouble in this game but gukesh managed to get all of his pieces out keep white's pawn under control and eventually he was able to win this one after bishop c5 bishop takes e6 h6 rook takes f2 prog resigned is just down a piece and has no more play Jumping into the women's candidates, Tan Zhang Yi was able to win her second game in a row, defeating Vaishali. This position came from a Jobava London, but the players reach a structure that is known as a Karo exchange, or many might refer to it as a reverse Carlsbad. The problem here for Black, though, is that she never managed to generate any serious counterplay on the queen side, while White was able to build up on the king side and eventually win thanks to a direct attack. After queen h4, knight h5, f6 white played g5 here for better or worse black had to take on g5 and play this structure although very very difficult position to play as white now has this e5 square and can follow up with f4 and just totally clamp down however that's what black had to do is after the move f5 white's initiative here was just simply too strong rook to g2 looking for ideas of knight f6 check and opening up the g file king h8 was played but now knight d f4 threatening things like knight g6 check followed by knight to f6 with mate coming black tried e5 here and now very very nice finish from tan Zhang Yi. knight to f6 threatening mate on h7 black was forced to take on f6 but now knight g6 check forced resignation is after the king were to move here 
white can take on e7 with check and black cannot recapture this one as in case they do g takes f6 opens up the rook on the g file and white is just winning the entire game so a very very nice win for tan jong Yi, who managed to move to a perfect 2-0 score that does it for today's recap. Tomorrow we'll see round three with Fabi Caruana, Nepo, Vidit, and Gukesh all leading in the FIDE candidates. Uh, it's promising to be an absolutely exciting uh, day ahead of us, so hopefully you will tune in. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, take care.